wonderful to, to see everybody out and to get to, to, to worship and to fellowship uh, with everyone this morning in the house. And uh, just a few announcements today as we get started. Um, as always in your bulletin, uh, in the back page there's a, a section for prayer requests and a uh, slip for visitors to fill out and drop in the offering plate. Uh, if either of those things pertain to you, tear that off and put it in the offering plate when that gets passed around. On the opposite side of that card this week, um, we have a, a, an area where you can drop in there. If you know, know of any graduates uh, in the church who will be graduating this year, uh, let us know who they are so that uh, we can include them uh, in our graduation recognition for men. Uh, a few other things that are coming up. Uh, today, after service, we have a, a vacation Bible school meeting. Uh, if, you're, if you're going to be an volunteer, if, you, if you're interested in it but don't know what you want to do, uh, please come to that meeting. It'll be right after church. We'll keep it really brief. Uh, just to be able to pass out some information and to let people know uh, who's doing what. Uh, and then that helps us to know what positions are going to fit in. Um, so if you're free, if you're interested in VPS, please, for just a few minutes after service, stick around. Uh, I'm guessing we're meeting in the fellowship hall? Fellowship hall? Yeah. So we'll be in the fellowship hall uh, right after church. Um, there's a few other announcements here in the bulletin. We'll check on those about the baseball trip. Um, Troy will touch on the, uh, the NHPC health assessment. I know he sent out some emails. Um, he'll follow up with that before the end of the service today. Uh, there is a wedding coming up, I see. Uh, so that's exciting uh, for Marshall and Sharon. Uh, so put that on your calendars. Um, and then there's also the, the, the mother-child luncheon tickets uh, that will be sold on April the 30th and on May the 7th. Uh, just keep in mind the card ministry and the donations. Uh, those things are rotated each month, so make sure we're keeping an eye on that and supporting those ministries as well. If you all will, let's bow our heads this morning and we'll open with a word of prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you so much for this day. Lord, we're just so grateful for this time that we can uh, gather in your house, Lord, and worship you. Lord, I just pray that as we hear this message this morning, God, that it speaks to each and every one of us. Lord, that our hearts and our minds are open. Uh, that we can accept your word, God, that we can apply it to our eyes, and that we can live it out. God, we just thank you, we praise you, and we love you. Amen. Good morning. I want to invite you to stand and join me in singing our first hymn, Oh, How I Love Jesus.
Using that time to come see you, and I've just avoided you like the plague. I mean, you've, you've come because I gave you a hard time. There you are, and I didn't come to speak to you. So this is way more comfortable, isn't it? <laughs> you know I love you. It's not too many guys that I, I love enough to pick on that much. Anyway, so welcome. I appreciate everybody being here. You know they call the... I think, uh, I get it right, they call the Sunday after big holidays, but in particular Easter, they call it Low Sunday. On average, something like a 25% drop in attendance. And so just looking out, I think, I think you guys busted the curve today. So thank you for coming out. Amen. Amen. Appreciate that. Um, as we transition this morning, for a couple of minutes anyway, into an attitude of prayer. There's so many things going on. Um, Gee, you know, when you think back over what we've been through the last three or four years, um, in addition to just the normal things in life that, that uh, we get to experience, it's just so important to remember that we have Christ, right? And that, uh, yeah, the things happen beyond our control, but that doesn't make us victims unless we choose to let it, right? That, that gives us an opportunity to be victors in Christ. I just think it's so important uh, to hold on to that. Um, but of course, we have to know Christ uh, for that to make sense. And I'll talk more about that in my, in my sermon here uh, in a few minutes. This morning, as, as we're thinking about prayer concerns and prayer needs, uh, there are names on the inside of your bulletin. I want you to take a look at those. And I encourage you, look at those names. Pray for those folks. But I, I beg you almost, please, please make a call. You know, our deacons and deaconesses do a good job. Um, I, I would never say I do a good job at anything. I try um, to make those visits and calls when I, when I can. And the, the deacons have been a huge help. And I know a lot of you do that on your own. But I really, really want to encourage each of you. If somebody's on your mind, God's talking to you. The Holy Spirit is working on you. If, if you feel that, act on it. Pick up the phone and call. I, I've heard it all over the spectrum. Yeah. I, I'm just going to be honest. I've had some of you tell me that that I do a horrible job at that. I've had some of you tell me I do a great job at that. So that's why I answer the God. Okay, because I know um, you know I'm going to get a perfect distribution of people happy and sad, or <laughs> pleased and unpleased. But we make every effort we can. To do that, it's just, you would think, I would think, that if, you, if the pastor called, you, the person in need would be satisfied. But I've been told that didn't count, right? I've been told, well, I'm supposed to call, so that, that doesn't mean that much. Thanks for calling, but that doesn't really matter. You're required. And so I know that there are people when they're out or having problems, you know, they sit. I know you guys know this. We sit in the same place every week. You kind of have a little church family, whether you know it or not. You're in, in little groups. And if somebody's missing from your group and hasn't been here, they have a problem, they kind of have an expectation that, that, that they're part of that small group. And they have an expectation that they're going to hear from somebody. Not the pastor, not the 
deacons, not the deaconesses, but somebody in that little group because that's where they fit in. And so I, just, I think it's very important for you to understand that. So if somebody's missing in that little area, we need to reach out to them. Uh, I apologize, I wasn't planning to talk about that. The Spirit just put that on my heart, so I shared it. Uh, what I did want to share with you for uh, prayer ministry, on the upside, I think some, some rules uh, for daily living. We are creatures of God. We are children of God. So we've got a few things, a few scriptures I'm going to share with you to help you through your day. If you want to take a few notes. First is wake up, right? The first thing is every day we have to wake up. You have to decide to have a good day. Psalms 118.24, I preached from this a few weeks ago. 118.24 says, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice in it. And you remember when I preached about it, what it said before that? They talked about salvation. That's why this is the day the Lord has made. And that's why we will rejoice in it. So wake up every day and decide to make it a good day and be a victor. Dress up. Now, that doesn't mean wear a suit and tie. Dress up means after you choose an attitude, show it on your face. Wear a smile. Okay? The best way to dress up is to put on a smile, to let people see Christ's love through you. A smile is a pretty inexpensive way to improve your looks. You can spend tons of money trying to do all kinds of other things, and that's going to destroy it. Just smile. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature. Because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance. But the Lord looks at the heart. I'm pretty sure James tells us that our heart, right? Our face and our mouth will reveal our heart. So let's smile. Dress up. Put a smile on. This one's going to get me in trouble with some of the moms. But I'm, I'm old, so this wasn't bad. The next one is shut up. Sorry. Maybe we need to bring that word back. Say nice things. Listen. Be quiet. Stop talking and listen. Listen to each other. Listen to God. Right? God... Uh, Dale said this during our worship meeting today, pre-service. God gave us two ears and one mouth. Think about that. We should listen twice as much as we talk. That's by design. Proverbs 13, 3 says this, He who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. We need to put that in on a t-shirt and wear it. Next is look up, right? As you get through your day, now it's time to look up. Look at the Lord. Look at Jesus. Look to Him for help. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's the first place we should look. A lot of mornings I wake up, or if you're like me, I wake up and my brain just goes, what are we doing? Boom, 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 boom. Start driving the fire. I told Carrie today, I said, I must be sleeping better. Because yesterday and today I woke up, I didn't even know what day it was. <laughs> I, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I, I think it's a good thing. But the first thing, that gives you an opportunity, right? That the first thing that you should do is look to Christ. Christ, what are we doing today? What do you have for me to do? So many days I come home and Carrie asks me, as she's done for many, many years, even before ministry, when I get home, was your day productive? And I say every day, well, I didn't get anything done I was planning to do, but God got a lot done. Right? That's how we should all approach our days. Reach up. Don't just look up for God. Reach up to God. Reach for something higher. 
Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. So that when you look up, if you're not sure, just trust Him. Just trust Him. Now, I, I added one to this list. Because I, I like this. You know, wake up, dress up, look up, reach up. And I think it's about time that we buck up. Or suck it up. We're weak. We have Christ. It is time to stand up. God will strengthen you. Yeah, we're weak. I am weak, but He is strong, right? We've been saying that in most of us since we were but do you get it? God will strengthen you. I have this verse written on the dry erase board right beside me, and I read it every day, multiple times a day. Romans 5, 3 through 5. And not only that, but we will also glory in tribulations. We're going to give thanks for the bad things that happen to us. Why? Because knowing we know that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given it to us. Folks, grab that verse. Know that you have Christ in your heart. And, and just walk out. Take it. Move forward. Get over it. Lastly, and most importantly for this ministry of prayer moment here, lift up. Lift up your prayers. Humbly submit it. Know that God is sovereign. I've said this many times. But God created the entire universe. Okay? He's sovereign over the entire universe. That means He's sovereign over you also. He's got it. He's got it. Philippians 4, 6, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. So whatever is on your heart, friends, whatever it is that you're struggling with today, let's do that right now. Let's give them up. Humbly submit that God is in control of your lives. And let's give them up to God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly submit. Lord, we put our trust and our faith in you. We bow before you, Lord, because you are an awesome and worthy God. You are awesome and worthy of all our praise. Lord, your word declares over and over again that we can do all things through you. So, Lord, we put all of our trust in you. You alone are God. You alone are our peace, our joy, our comfort. You are our heart and our soul. You're everything that is seen and unseen. So Lord, keep us. Guide us. Fill us with your grace, Lord, and make us yours for all of our days. Lord, we love you and we submit to you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now I'll ask our ushers to come forward, please, and receive this morning's offer.
Father, we thank you. We thank you for being our strength, Lord. You fill our hearts with gladness and with joy. Lord, let us then give these offerings to you cheerfully, with gladness and joy. Lord, everything we have belongs to you. We rejoice in giving back to you. Lord, bless these tithes and offerings as we give today. Let your light guide us. Let your compassion, Lord, be the love that inspires us. Let your presence be the will that empowers us. Lord, guide us as we seek to use our time, our talent, and our treasure, all according to your will. We ask you in your precious name. Amen. Thank you. So at this time, while the ushers are... Going back, if you are in kindergarten through fifth grade, uh, you can head out now to the children's church. I hope everybody uh, had just an incredibly good and you know, joyous Easter weekend. You know, the whole whole celebration. Um, I know personally I'm grateful. There were a lot of answered prayers um, over the weekend in the form of travel mercies. You know, so many people moving around. Um, if you're like me, look, families getting bigger and more spread out. And, um, it's uh, it's just different with everybody spread out, but everybody got where they needed to go safely. Um, New Hope Baptist Church we had such an incredible holy week and weekend of services. It was just, um, it's a lot of work with the staff and, and with our sound guys and, and all the worship team. Just trying to get one service each week ready, but you know, Easter week, you know, there's, there's three services. And um, I'm just really grateful for all of their hard work, um, but also for you. We had, we had a great crowd for Monday, Thursday as we, you know, we remember the Last Supper. Uh, we remember Jesus' commandment to love one another as he loved us. And, and we shared communion together. Sunday morning, Easter morning, we had a beautiful sunrise service, uh, which was well attended. I think maybe the breakfast idea really worked. You know, if you can't get them to come for a sunrise, feed them. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good method. It's good. Uh, but we had a great crowd there as well. Um, I don't know, for those that weren't there, did you guys see the picture that we posted of the sunrise? Uh, man, God is amazing. Right as we did the benediction, I said amen and uh, turned around and looked over my shoulder. That was the view that we had. Just God is always right on time. It was spectacular. So then... We had our worship service. It was great to have everybody here. Um, again, God's amazing. Katie, Katie was sick and wasn't feeling well and couldn't do special music. And so the uh, Holy Spirit was kind of like, hey, nice service line. I've got a different idea. <laughs> That's how it was. Todd steps in. I'll tell this story when he's not here to sing so much this morning. He comes in and uh, he's going to fill in last minute. And he says, the first song that he wanted to do was Amazing Grace, uh, My Chains Are Gone. We had that listed. We were going to sing that as our benediction. So he's like, well, I can't do that. So his backup song was He Lives. But we had He Lives in the congregation singing. So he's about ready to strike out, you know. He was he frustrated. He was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. So Dale, you know, we put our heads together and said, you know what, just sing. We're just going to follow the Spirit. Do your do the song the Spirit called you to do, and we'll do it at the end. And I don't know about you, but that was spectacular. What a way to end a perfect holy week. And that was all the Spirit, right? And, um, and what teeny honey did we live in our plan is just the wisdom to get out of the way and let those things happen. So we ended the service. I know several families I saw uh, stopping by the little photo area that was set up. So I enjoyed greeting people as they were leaving. And 
watching all the families taking pictures, and then later in the day, a lot of you posted those and tagged the church, which was really cool. So thanks for doing that. It's just an incredible event. And, and for all the work and effort that went into it from the staff and volunteer side, I also just want to thank my church family for, for worshiping and for making such a great weekend. Here in a few minutes, I'm going to read from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 3. So if you want to go ahead and turn there, go ahead and do that. I was thinking now with the holiday behind me, you know, I spent some time this week reflecting on kind of where we've been and what we've been talking about. And also a lot of time praying about where we're headed. We've been talking for a little while now about the importance, you know, we can't overstate the importance of experiencing God, experiencing His love, right, of being in the Spirit and walking in His Spirit and then just letting that fill us up, kind of at the end of service time. You can feel it, you can feel it filling up. But then you got to go a little further, you know. Let it pour out. Just let it out. Let it, you know, let it be messy. Let it get on the person next to you. See what happens. So that's what we've been talking about. We've been talking about our responsibilities as Christians. You know, I know there are a few of you here probably that aren't saved. And I'm going to preach the gospel to you every opportunity I have. The majority of you know Christ in your heart. And so I can spend more time trying to get you out of your seats and get you to work. Our, our responsibilities as a Christian are our job description, right? That's how I present it to you. Love God above all else, right? Love God. Love each other as we love ourselves. Or as he commanded us, love each other as he loved us. Why? So they would know we were his. Right? It's, it's evangelism. Love each other because we need to love each other, but also love each other so they see it. That's the part we're not very good at. And then the Great Commission, go, make, baptize, and teach. We talked about that. We spent a week with each one. And then more importantly, we talked about what's at stake. Eternity. Right? Your salvation. Everybody's going to spend eternity somewhere. Where are you going to spend it? That's what's at stake. And now, well, now it's time to pivot. It's time to pivot. It's time to focus on the action part of all these messages that God has shared with us. We're going to come back to this at the end of the service today. But you've received a couple of communications from me already about what we're calling Vision Quest 23. Okay, what's that? Really, it's, it's just a name we give in, in the simplest terms to an activity where all of us, right, collectively, as a church, we're going to, we're going to create our vision. We're going to plan the future. For the church. Fully transparent, fully collaborative, and most importantly, fully focused on and seeking God's will. Amen? That's the most important thing I want you to hear. As we do this, we will be focused on God. To figure out where we're headed. Where we're headed. Now, a couple of years from now, further down the road than that? Where are we headed? And how will we get there? I think it's exciting. I think it's crazy exciting. It's a little terrifying. And it's definitely a little uncomfortable. But it's exciting. And although we've been working on this in the background, collectively at the church, we're going to start this journey today. Again, 
I'll come back. Uh, in your bulletin, there's, a, there's a, an announcement, a survey. I'll send you two communications about it. And we're going to do that today after the, after the benediction. We felt as a staff and as a council that the easiest way to, to start this with this is a health assessment. It's a benchmark, right? We're not going to solve world peace with this survey. It's just a, it's a chance to figure out where we are. Okay? Uh, we're working with the group through the state convention called Renew. Four men that I know very well and trust beyond the that will be helping us and guiding us through this process. But the first step is this health assessment. And we're going to do that right after uh, we finish today. It's exciting. But this morning, before we get to that, I want to ask you a question. What is the purpose? What is the purpose of life? It's rhetorical. I'm surprised nobody yelled at the answer, but I, I didn't want you to. What's the purpose of life? So think about that while we work through the message. Let's look at uh, John chapter 17, verse 3. I'll read it. Jesus is praying, and in the prayer he says this in verse 3. And this is eternal life, that they may know you. The only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you would bless the reading of your word, Lord, and bless the ears and the hearts that need to hear it. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, Lord, be acceptable in my sight. O Lord, my strength and my obedience. Okay, so quickly, for context, we need to just remember here, we still have the Last Supper, okay? We're at the Last Supper. Jesus has spent so much time here talking to the apostles and sharing so much information with them, preparing them for what is to come, preparing them for what's going to happen in the next days, for what's going to happen over the next weeks, for, for what is to come, period. The end of John's account, Jesus prays. He prays for himself, he prays for his apostles and his disciples, and he prays for all believers. At the very beginning of his prayer for himself is where we find today's verse. I'll go back to verse 1 and ask you. Or not verse 1, I'm sorry. I'll be okay. My, my pages are changing up here on me. It must be more on the air going. Uh, things are going in. Verse 1 of chapter 17. Jesus spoke these words. He lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son also may glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So the purpose of life, the purpose of life is to know God. To know Jesus Christ and to know them for eternity. I said earlier, everyone, everyone will spend eternity somewhere. Those who believe, those who have confessed with their mouth and believe in their heart that Jesus died and rose for their sins. For them, the eternal life that Jesus is speaking about means living forever in God's presence. Eternal life is not just about the length of time or the length of life. It's about the quality of that time. It's about the quality of that eternity. Knowing God for eternity 
knowing Him as Lord, knowing Him as Father, knowing Him as friend. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. This last verse takes us to an interesting place. Knowing God. To truly know God means that we know Him. We, we, that we need to know Him relationally. We need to have a relationship with Him. It's not enough to know about Him. To just know Him or only know Him intellectually. We have to also have a relationship with Him. There are millions upon millions of people who know about Jesus Christ. Meaning, they know some information about Him. They know who He is. They know that a lot of people worship Him. Some of those people even go to church. But they've never allowed those facts and the things that they know to become their personal reality. They've never allowed Jesus into their heart. They hold the knowledge that they have in their heads without allowing His truth to penetrate. To penetrate their hearts. Jesus explained the problem best in Matthew 15, verses 8 and 9. In these verses He says, These people draw near to Me with their mouth. They honor Me with their lips, but their heart is far from Me. And in vain... They worship me, teaching his doctrines the commandments of men. He, he's simply saying, you're more focused on the world than on me. It's so easy for us to be focused on the world. It's also easy for those of us sitting here to substitute our religion and the things that we do every day because we've always done them as a real relationship with Christ. We tend to think if you know, we're checking those boxes and we're doing those things that I've always done, I'm sitting in the right place, I'm here, that if I just do those things, that's good enough. I think I did the math a few years ago on that against an average lifespan. It's less than a half a percent of your life. If you come to church every day, Every Sunday, we even throw in Sunday school, I think, in the math. It's between a half and one percent of your lifespan that you have given to God. And so, if in your heart, you think that is a relationship with Christ, you're wrong. That's not making Him a priority. That's checking a box. That's no relationship. You've given one percent of your life. Congratulations. When he says he wants it all, when he says he wants you to give up everything, deny yourselves, is what the scripture says, pick up your cross and follow me. I talked about this when I was talking about priorities. He doesn't want the one percent, he wants all. He wants it all. And how you do that is you still have all those things you have to do. The key is to come here for two hours a week and check the boss. The key is to make Christ part of everything you do, every second of every day. Make Him the focus. That might lead to a relationship. The facts that we know about Jesus will only come alive when we get to know Him personally. When we get to know Him, we walk with Him when we worship Him in spirit and in truth, that means that, of course, we're going to invest intellectually. We need to study. We need to know everything we can about Him so that we can have a relationship with Him and get to know Him personally. Jesus is a person. He's God and man. He's fully human. He's incarnate. Not now. He was. To know Him is to enter into a relationship. He said, and I've said already today, the greatest commandment, right? The greatest commandment, that's what's in our job description, is to love the Lord your God. But it also says how. How do we love the Lord our God? 
with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen. That's, that's everything. All. Not some of your heart. Not part of your soul. Not a little bit of mind and strength. All. It's hard to love somebody you don't know. It's that simple. Loving him starts with surrendering to him and surrendering to his plan for your life. Knowing Him requires us to continually see Him, to continually learn more about Him, but to also enjoy our fellowship with Him. In order to truly know Him in the way that Jesus is talking about in today's verse, is to truly experience Him. It means that we need to know Him both intellectually and relationally. So, I just want to share something with you. It's an easy way, it's a short illustration, a simple way for me to help you remember this relationship. You can read this, it's all here. But I'm going to boil it down. This may not intuitively make sense, the first word. That sounds kind of bad to start with the word crime. But bear with me. Here's our relationship with God. Okay. Creation. He's our creator. That's simple. God created everything. He created you. And then man rebelled against him. Right? We're separated from God because of our sin. And then what did God do? He intervened. He became man, incarnate. He came to us because we couldn't fix the gap. We couldn't close it. So after he intervened, right, he gave us a choice. We have free will to accept him, accept his grace, or reject him. It's a simple path to where we're going to spend eternity. Accept him, spend eternity with him, knowing him in his presence, like today's verse. Reject him and be separated him in outer darkness and torment forever. If we accept him, he's given us a mission. Right? To love him. To love each other. To go and to make and to baptize and to teach. Why? Eternity. Our eternity and the eternity of those who we take that message to. We'll focus on this part. Our mission and our goal. Now, I'm not trying in this survey to ask if we took a mission and a goal. I'm not trying to load the survey. This, this isn't our specific mission and church goal we're going to ask. So they're going to accuse me of trying to skew the results. But this is what God, this is what Jesus has told us to do. This is our mission. I, when I built this slide, I looked at it, I thought, me, what's in it for me? What am I supposed to do, and what's in it for me? You've got your job description, I've repeated it over and over. That's the mission. And remember, right, God did not create a mission for the church. He created the church for his mission. Never forget that. And what's at stake? To grow the kingdom. To grow the church, his church, the body of Christ. To grow this church. We've discussed many times in the past the functions of the church, right? Evangelism, edification, service, and worship. And scripture is clear in the early church in Acts 
If we do those things, if everything that we do as a church body is a body of Christ, fully focused on God, everything that we do, every goal we set, fits in those lanes. Scripture says the kingdom will grow. It will be expanded. Which means that if the kingdom grows, then we have a shot to grow the church. We need to do it in the right order. Eternity it's clear if we submit to Him, I said it earlier, if we confess with our mouths and we believe in our hearts that He is God, and He died and rose again for our sins, if we submit to Him and we act on His will for us, if we do that, we gain eternity through grace. We bring others to know that grace. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love each other. Go, make, baptize, and teach. Doing these things will grow the church. Personal growth, edification. It will grow the kingdom. It will grow the church. It's relational. It's about relationships here and with God. It's actionable. We can do this. It's being done. We can do it. What is the purpose of life? Jesus told us straight out. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Over the last few years, I've coined this in a way that we say, no hope. Right? If we know God, if we truly experience Him, we know His hope. Show hope. Let the Spirit fill you up and overflow. Take it. To others, show it. Show his love. Serve and worship. And this will happen. On a personal level, on a relationship level with God and within the church. Watch it grow. Know. Show. And grow. Watch it happen. And know God for eternity. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day of praise and worship. I thank you, Lord, for your message this morning, this opportunity just to serve you. Lord, most of all, I thank you for the gospel. I thank you for the good news of Jesus Christ. I can't get excited about anything else, Lord. I can get excited about that. We thank you that, Lord, you are the resurrection and the life. Lord, that death holds no power over you. Lord, that in your name you've, you've gathered your people together to form the church. A body of Christ, this church, Lord, to serve your mission. Your life and your love are seen in the life and the love of believers within that church, within this church. Lord, I pray that we would be like a city on a hill, shining your light, Lord, into the darkness of the world. Neither death or life, angels, rulers, Things present or future, heights or depths or anything else, Lord, in all of your creation can separate your people from your love. So I pray this morning you would make us, make this church, Lord, a beacon, a beacon of your love to each other, throughout this community that we serve. And then into the world. Lord, if anyone here needs to know you as their Savior,
If they need to rededicate themselves to their relationship, Lord, and their personal walk with you. Lord, if they'd like to join this church family and help us become that beacon as they grow and serve and worship you. Lord, I pray that your spirit would move in their hearts and they would make that decision today. That they would make that decision public as an act of obedience and witness to what you've done in their lives. Lord, we praise you and we do all things in your name. We pray. Amen. Our heavenly dedication is just as I am. Please stand.